Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I wanted to do a video talking about an article that came out in the Times of Israel, which for those who don't know is a very, very big online newspaper. It came out on October 6th, so earlier this month, um, relative to when I'm recording this video, the article was by a journalist called Ricky Ben David, and uh, it's entitled Israeli housing prices have nearly doubled in a decade with no signs of slowing. Now, um, I don't typically record videos about articles that appeared on news websites. And the reason I'm doing this is because I truly think that this was a very, very significant article. And it's also an article that I suspect and I know is going to be glossed over in the news cycle. In fact, it's already happened. Now, yes, that's only natural. There is such thing as a news cycle and things get displaced but there is a much bigger issue in my opinion in Israel and that's permanently that these huge socio-economic problems get totally pushed out of the way because there's always some security situation that uh, forms a central part of political parties election manifestos. I've been living in Israel for six years. During the course of that time, I've lived through multiple elections, including the famous three election stalemate we had. I've tried to follow what the various political parties have been putting out in terms of uh, material intended to reach voters. And I've seen very, very sparse attention ever being paid to not just the housing crisis, but indeed to any socioeconomic Israel issue in Israel. That includes also the cost of living uh, which has been repeatedly found to be among the very highest in the world. According to one index, Israel was rated the eighth most expensive uh, country in the world and the second most expensive country on a per square meter property basis. Now, this is kind of what this article by Ricky Ben David uh, discusses, talking about basically how insane the property bubble has become. Now, that actually brings me to a point that there's really... Uh, not much scope to talk about the Israeli property bubble because if this is a property market that shows no signs of correcting even during the pandemic, is it really fair to call that a bubble or is this just the typical state of the housing market here in Israel? Now, a lot of the coverage talking about real estate in Israel has been talking about how positive that attribute of the market is. The market always goes up property in Israel is a great investment and I just have to make the point even though it's 100% obvious one person's great investment is another person's struggle to get on the property ladder and that issue is just not being um, addressed but addressed very very well by this article one other observation I would say living in Israel and consuming I try to watch one hour of Hebrew uh, TV or YouTube per night just to try to get the language uh, going, I'm seeing thankfully more attention being paid in the internal discourse to this issue. And that is so, so overdue because the numbers here are mind boggling. Now, this whole housing crisis issue doesn't just talk to um, an issue of here's a problem in Israel and here is the extent of the problem and here are some solutions I think this also talks to a dynamic I've been seeing for quite some time, especially recently for whatever reason, just this massive disconnect between diaspora jury and jury in Israel. And there seems to be this uh, mentality, I don't know if it's always been a mentality or it's just emerged, that you can't criticize anything about Israel without being anti-Israel. And that's ludicrous. It's crazy to suggest that this housing crisis, this is a huge issue. Um, you know, if a diaspora, some uh, Jewish person living in London or in New York were to ask me, what do I think about living in Israel? By the way, I was quoted in this article and I would probably repeat the quote that I gave this journalist, which is how can I possibly envision a future in a country that only offers indefinite renting and in which the rental market is kind of a disaster. There is uh, really no such thing as long-term rents in Israel. Uh, rents relative to property are not, exp are not actually that expensive, but it's kind of an unregulated jungle. And you know, people would say, 
uh, isn't you know Israel is an amazing country and it's doing amazing things and isn't COVID ama isn't it's hasn't its response to uh, COVID been amazing and I would say all those things are true now some people of course are very anti-Israel politically but with the pro-Israel crowd I can connect about all those issues but I can't really connect because as somebody living here this is the issue the cost of living uh, the salaries relative to the cost of living which do not make sense by and large and the property market which is yes a global dynamic but in Israel it's an insane dynamic and it creates a uh, feeling of total and utter hopelessness for young people living in Israel because the amount of money required for a down payment this is if you ask me the single most concerning slash shocking uh, fact in this article it's two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars that means that to qualify for a mortgage we're talking about the down payment not the cost of the property to qualify for a mortgage because Israel's central bank uh, limits uh, the down payment at 25% that's the that's the entry level and even that's higher than a lot of countries Ireland you can get 10% first-time homeowner mortgages but that two hundred and sixty two thousand dollar down payment which is to state the obvious more than a quarter of a million United States dollars that's what you need to get on the housing market in Israel that does not make sense in a country where the average salary is in the 40,000 to 50,000 range I uh, how are young people supposed to come up with a quarter of a million bucks in savings that's ludicrous um, there are other complete there are other just really really good uh, observations in this article by Ricky Ben David um, I just want to scroll through it for a few minutes and just sort of talk about a few of them um, one interesting one here was that year on just this year so far YTD year, year to date it's been at more than a 12% increase in the price of real estate now that is crazy we're talking about 2021 the year of the pandemic this article was written in October 6 which means there's still effectively October November December an entire quarter left in the year for that 12% to become 15% or 16% so to say that the market is overheating overheating or overheated is a gigantic understatement so uh, that's one that's what the Times of Israel chose as its uh, subtitle personally if I was uh, working at this newspaper I would have gone for the uh, the shocking mortgage figure um, but that one is pretty shocking too whoever whoever uh, whoever was copy editing this piece had a lot of options to choose from in terms of statistics uh, so that's shocking just there's a few more here that are just kind of mind-boggling the average price now one thing about Israel for those not based in Israel uh, to know important context for reading this article is to understand that in Israel the vast majority of people are living in apartments not houses so not only are we talking about staggering sums of money 250 thousand United States dollars we're talking about those staggering sums of money to live in an apartment not a detached home it's just ludicrous the average price uh, for a four with four uh, room this was in it is in 2011 right that was 1.45 million shekels uh, which was which is today four hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh in in us dollars um and that's actually gone up that's an old figure um by 2013 housing prices had increased by at least i i'm, I'm not i'm not trying to rob this article uh from from the journal I, I i'm just trying to, to regurgitate or repeat some of these just to try really get this um uh, get the extent of the housing crisis out to anybody interested and that includes i think a lot of diaspora jews who again as i mentioned I, I hate to use this word but I think live in a kind of permanent delusion um, about Israel and just buy into this idea that everything in Israel is perfect and everything Israel does is perfect now a lot of people will hate me for saying that but I do believe a lot of people buy into that uh, this is not perfect this is not a perfect situation uh, by June 2021 
So this is the current figure. The average cost of a four room apartment in Israel was roughly 2.2 million shekels. Um, 682,608 United States dollars USD at the time this article was published. So that's almost uh, $700,000. Again, we're talking about an apartment, not a detached host house. Um, so that's where the market stands. You can see why the situation is so problematic because on the one hand, you have these absolutely crazy property values. On the other hand, uh, you have these this rel this high minimum down payment requirement levied by the Central Bank of Israel, and uh, I have rarely been called a mathematical genius. But if you combine, if you multiply a big number by a relatively high multiplier, you're going to get another big big number uh, out of that uh, mathematics, and that's kind of what has happened um, in Israel. Now, there's uh, there's more uh, details here. Uh, one of those is that it talks about the government's. A scheme to incentivize home ownership, uh, which is a lottery program. It was a replacement for Mechir Lamishta Ken, which was Israel's older program. And it talks about how, uh, how, how I don't want to use the word miserly, but how limited uh, that is in terms of a scheme. And it's qualified by all sorts of qualifications, like the fact that uh, the houses in it cannot be in what are called uh, luxury or desirable um, areas. Uh, just to just a couple more things before I wrap up um, on this video here. Uh, now, they uh, included some uh, good comment here from um, economics, economics, economists, researchers uh, who do point out that um, it's, it is a global issue. There's absolutely no doubt that uh, young people around the world are having difficulty getting on the property ladder. But uh, what I uh, in the quotation I sent in for this piece, and what the uh, economists are saying is essentially that well in Israel it's just like taken it's like injected with steroids uh, it's so crazy uh, so people now here is again here here is here's a bit of the article uh, I find absolutely mind-boggling so this is from professor Danny Ben Shachar uh, people looking to buy an apartment nowadays must come up with roughly eight hundred and forty thousand shekels two hundred and sixty one thousand one hundred and forty dollars in uh, private equity so that's that number there and uh, it's the the source of that is uh, his this uh, research by this economist for the q2 of uh, 2021 and that's already risen from the start of the year where that figure was 230,000. so you can see the extent that the idea of owning property in israel it, it's it, to say it's a moving target is uh, is an is again an understatement uh, research has also shown that the um, wages in Israel have not really risen commensurate with the cost of living, which is also extraordinarily high. So the financial situation that exists in Israel today, I don't like to use the word impossible because it's so uh, negative and obviously is lack of, uh, is, there's lack of hope. Everything can always be changed. So my hope would be, I'm thinking about writing a, a book on the general economic picture in Israel, really. Um, and talking about some of these suggestions right now we have simultaneously going on a few dynamics that are just impossible we have property being insanely expensive we have the cost of living being very high and the third dynamic we have is that salaries outside of the 10 percent of the economy uh, working for high-tech companies remain relative to the cost of living insufficient or too low and this is just pushing in a year in which the uh, that equity required for home ownership has risen by uh, more than uh, 25,000 USD in the space of one year. I mean, how can you work with those economics? It's not possible to work with them. Um, also worth pointing out, there, there's a huge concentration of wealth in Israel and a huge degree of income inequality that this uh, article points out too. So uh, this was a shocking, another sh another one of the shocking numbers, according to a 2014 report, 67.3% of assets in Israel were held by the top 10% of uh, the, the top decile, in other words, it doesn't say of what, um, I believe it's of uh, by net worth. So we're talking, just, just pause and think about what was written there, that two thirds of the property in Israel 
are owned by 10% um, of the population. Now, what you've seen happen in Israel is just this crazy mass wealth transfer of uh, land, land originally uh, being relatively cheap or property being cheap and uh, that no longer being the case and a lot of people holding a lot of it and using those properties as investment properties because it's a great market to invest in. It's a terrible market to come here without a fortune uh, in your bank account and to attempt to organically save money through doing a job that pulls in an average Israeli salary, which is kind of my situation, uh, and to try to amass more than a quarter of a million dollars in savings. That just does not make sense. Um, so there's uh, there's some more statistics here about the Mechir Lemishtaken program I mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, some guy asking if that was uh, if that was a joke. The income distribution um, and the restricted supply. Now this is where the article gets interesting because uh, you know it's one thing to point out everything that is wrong with this country. Um, it's another thing to posit solutions. Now let's talk about uh, something extraordinary. I'm just going to swap back to the article momentarily. Over 90% of the land in Israel is state owned and managed by uh, the ILA, the Israel Land Authority. Now, what is alleged or uh, being described by these economists is that that's a crazy high percentage, firstly, of state, uh, state ownership of land, 90%. And uh, it's basically saying that there is restricted supply and it's insufficient to meet demands but uh, again this is where we venture into the territory perhaps of conspiracy theorists uh, it's saying that uh, the banks and the property developers are doing very well now if you're interested if, if your hebrew is good enough uh, there is a good uh, show called Ezrach Gueta it means uh, the citizen Gueta to former Shas MK and that's up on Khan's YouTube channel and that's kind of similar he investigates these issues he's done one about the major developing companies that get these crazy uh, state tenders to build out massive. So there's people doing very, very well in Israel and there's people doing poorly. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to paint myself as a, uh, as, as, you know, as kind of a victim, but I'm just a typical young person. There is hundreds and thousands of Olim like me for whom this picture just does not make sense. Um, and I, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's just crazy. So uh, this was, th this guy says, is it a joke? The target price program uh, replaced, replacing the Mechir Lemish Ken by Elkin, uh, it's 20% if you win it, uh, if you qualify off the market price. Now, again, we have to point out that 12.5% in the year to date, uh, that is just, it's absurd and it's qualified by location. And that's the best solution that the Israeli government has uh, been offered to date and there's more discussion from the economists. Basically the ideas um, are being number one to break this ridiculous state monopoly on the supply of land in Israel. The second idea uh, being tabled um, is to punitively tax foreign Jews, now I hate to say foreign Jews but predominantly those investing in Israel's real estate bubble are foreign Jews because it's created this bizarre situation in which people who actually move to Israel, Olim Chadashim, are unable to get on the property ladder and Jews who have not decided to live to Israel uh, are getting wealthy on the back of Israel's market. So it's kind of talking about state intervention, on the one hand pulling back intervention in the supply of property or land for development and on the other hand increasing state intervention in uh, enforcing punitive taxation measures against these uh, high net worth individuals who are driving the bubble and uh, on the third hand building more uh, on the fourth hand offering something better than 20 percent in places that, that probably not so many people want to live and in places where most people couldn't really get a job uh, and these are all problematic dynamics so right now based on this piece it would be toxic positivity to say that there are many happy takeaways from this article. There are many good questions raised. Uh, there are um, some very illuminating things pointed out here about how wealth is distributed in Israel and how in the, uh, what I think is fascinating in the space of such a short time 
Israel has gone from such a poor country, such a socialist country, to such an extreme capitalist country with high income inequality, 66-67% of, uh, of uh, property owned by the top decile, and nowadays for somebody coming to Israel, having to find some way to muster up more than a quarter of a million dollars simply to put a down payment on an apartment that is absolutely ludicrous and i will end with this thing people talk about threats to israel all the time especially politicians talk about gaza they talk about hezbollah they talk about the iranian nuclear program and these are threats these are physical threats to the uh, survival of israel um, i saw someone on twitter make this point and i want to back it this is also a massive threat to zionism because israel is trying to bring in uh, some vast amount of uh, new immigrants, Olim Khadashim, 500,000, and its playbook needs changing, in my opinion. It's just saying, come to Israel. Okay, we're going to come to Israel uh, to never be able to own property. Who would want to do that? So Zionism and ideology can only take Israel so far, and uh, these dynamics are just, uh, I, I can't, I would honestly say, and I'm actually, it's funny because I've just, I'm following this video up with one about mental health. And honestly, these dynamics are kind of depressing because uh, in, you know, in the Israeli economy of a 45 hour work week, it kind of feels a bit thankless to be working very hard to just rent forever in a rental market that is unregulated and also has its own set of problems that weren't discussed in this piece. So I'm sorry to be, negative i do believe that toxic positivity is a massive massive problem and thing in the pro-israel community that gigantic gigantic flaws with the economics of the state of israel are just swept under the carpet uh, and people i saw someone on facebook saying you know this article is fake news that uh, if you're going to the level of conspiracy theory just to tune out uh, the pointing out of uncomfortable realities then there is a problem uh, thank you for watching that video and uh, hopefully more videos coming soon about Israel and other things of interest to those subscribing to this channel.